So we are noticing a lot of anxiety and signs of depression in a lot of students. One in five students actually typically struggle with a mental health problem, and that's for just youth in general. And we're noticing signs of stress, like you see in taking tests, performance anxiety, trying to kind of perfectionism, be the best that they can be, and just get ahead of all of their other classmates. And it leads to a lot of stress for them, their family dynamics, whether that's divorce of their parents or other economic struggles. The Ending the Silence program is like a 50 to 60 minute program that we um, run at schools from you know middle to high school students and it talks about um, you know what mental health is, what warning signs there is um, for like mental health conditions and also suicide. Uh, then we talk about some you know uh, ways to get help, what resources they can and you know how to be a good friend to you know help a friend get help. We really want to teach students to become a navigator for resources so we're teaching them about setting their own boundaries and learning about how they can help and how they might not be able to help. We really want to remind them that they're not a superhero so they can try to their best to connect with people and help them with resources but you can't always help everyone so they're just kind of connecting them to adults that might be able to help a little bit further. All of our programs are at no cost. Both the schools, the admin and the teachers and the students really benefit from these programs. They always come up to us after the presentations to kind of talk to us about it. We always leave room for kind of a QA and a at the end when possible to have that conversation. Students will come up and say that they've been so heard and seen from it and they kind of share their own experiences as well. It helps them see someone else, kind of their age too sometimes that has gone through it. We try to keep our presentator, presenter a young adult as well so they can see from someone who kind of looks a little bit more like them. So we really just want them to connect more. If you're seeing someone struggling, we want you to invite them to sit with you at lunch, invite them to different social activities or clubs at school, and just kind of build that community together. For more serious crises, we want them to be able to find a trusted adult that they both trust, kind of help navigate them a little bit further, or look into other resources like hotlines and helplines, really go into their counseling centers and find other people that can kind of support them with that next step. One of the key things to think about is like the intensity, the duration, and the level of distress. Because it's so hard with teenagers to know like, oh, you know, they might be, you know, grumpy or sad or withdrawn. And if that only lasts a couple of days, that's probably a normal, typical thing. But when it goes on for a couple of weeks, or if it starts affecting that they don't get out of bed, they don't go to school, if they had always turned in their homework and they're stopped turning in homework, or things like they're sleeping in class, or being very anxious and nervous and afraid to go do things. But another huge thing is withdrawing from friends. If they used to go out all the time and now they're staying home and not wanting to see friends, those kind of things would be warning signs, especially if they've gone on for, you know, a couple of weeks. You know, there are a lot of resources. 988 is a great resource. There's also the crisis text line, which is 741-741. Um, and then NAMI also runs a lot of uh, support groups for parents. One of them is a NAMI um, Child and Adolescent Network, which is specifically for parents who have um, kids who are struggling in the school age range, and they can meet other parents so they can kind of share resources and get support from themselves.